South River at 200, the 1920 celebration. The idea for celebrating South River's 200th anniversary was conceived in the summer of 1919 when a committee was organized to boost South River's industries. The first meeting of the celebration committee, chaired by Mayor George L. Burton and N.W. Clayton, President of the Chamber of Commerce, was held in May 1920. Additional meetings were held between May and August 1920, with minimal progress until a larger public meeting was held on August 2nd and the planning committee was reorganized. David Armstrong was elected chairman and plans were made for a series of events to raise funds for the celebration. September 17th and 18th were the dates chosen for the anniversary celebration. After a fireman's parade was added to the program, the dates were changed to September 24th and 25th in order not to conflict with the State Firemen's Convention. The final program included the crowning of a queen, three parades, sports and athletic events, a concert, and two block dances. Factories agreed to close at noon on the day of the celebration and remain closed until the following Monday in order to allow employees to join in the parades and celebration. South River's 1720 beginnings are attributed to a descendant of Thomas Willett, the first mayor of New York City. Willett descendants were featured throughout the 1920 celebration. The oldest living descendant at the time was Caroline Willett Klein, aged 89. She died in 1924. Daniel Curtis Slover Borum, the youngest descendant, was three years old. He died in 2003. The contestants for Anniversary Queen were Eva Bissett, Mary Radican, and Constance Frian. The contest was to collect the most money to help defray the cost of the anniversary celebration. It closed on September 17th. Eva Bissett, who collected $1,465.45, was declared the winner. A decorating firm from Plainfield, the Lagrin Brothers Company, was hired for the event. Two welcome arches were planned, one for the corner of Main and Gordon Streets, and a second at the intersection of Jackson and Ferry Streets. Stores and public buildings were included in the decorating scheme, and private houses, such as the one visible through the arch, could be decorated at a cost ranging from $3 to $15. Flags and bunting were hung across streets and on the facades of buildings throughout the borough. The Grand Hotel, in the left forefront of this photograph, was decorated from street level to roof line. Smaller businesses lining both sides of the street also joined in the display. The celebration started at noon on September 24th with a 15-minute salute of bells and whistles throughout the borough. A parade beginning on Lower Main Street was the major event of the afternoon. More than a mile long, it was estimated that 5,500 people participated. Uncle Sam led the way, followed by the police force, the mayor and council, and other borough officials. Price's band was next in line, and the veterans marched in step behind. The house in the photo is thought to be number 235 at the corner of Main and DeVoe Streets. Floats followed the initial marchers. Raymond Dudley Borum and Warren Clouser Borum both Willett descendants represented Willett's arrival in 1720. One was seated in a large canoe and the other represented one of the Native American inhabitants of the area. The float won first prize in the day's competition. Next in line was a float carrying some of the descendants of Samuel Willett. Among the descendants were members of the June, Service, Van Deventer, Borum, Martin, Holmes, Brown, Klein, Peterson, and Herman families. Public school children also participated in the parade. Each class represented a scene from South River's history. The boys of Professor E. Johnson Bonter's seventh grade class from school number three, later renamed Lincoln School, carried a model of South River's first school. Floats and marchers from local organizations such as the Junior Mechanics and the Daughters of Liberty followed the schools and were themselves followed by groups from South River's Hungarian, Polish, Italian, and Russian communities. The Polish group won a prize for having the largest contingent and was accompanied by its own band. Among the marchers were 208 Polish girls dressed in colors to represent the Stars and Stripes. 
The stars were pinned to their caps. Decorated automobiles and floats rounded out the parade. The American enameled brick and tile company float included a replica of a kiln. The men who rode on it simulated the process of making their product, and small souvenir bricks were handed out to spectators along the parade route. The display was awarded second prize in the float competition. The Women's Auxiliary of the Chamber of Commerce had a float that represented their current aims for the borough. It featured a public library building and emphasized clean streets and walkways. It won first prize for the most original idea for a float. A football game and a band concert followed the parade on September 24th. At 8 p.m., Eva Bissett was crowned Queen Riverie for the duration of the celebration. The coronation ceremony was held at the foot of Main Street, where a grandstand big enough to hold 400 people was erected. Her female attendants were Constance Frien, Mary Radican, Rhea Winters, and Teresa Coombs. The male attendants were Kenneth Gray, E. Johnson Bonter, Ronald Cathcart, and Kermit DeVoe. The pages were Raymond D. Borum and Edmund Mark. Although the remaining four males in the photo are unnamed, one is likely Mayor George L. Burton, who served as Chancellor for the occasion, and another, Edward A. Bone, who served as Prime Minister. A block dance ended the day's activities. Day two of the celebration started with an athletic meet that included a three-mile road race. The baby parade followed. Seen here are five of the entrants. The Garden of Roses entry carried Adrian and Harris Major from Cerebral. It was awarded first place in the float category. The Firemen's Parade, scheduled to begin at 3 o'clock, was delayed a half hour due to the late arrival of two of the fire companies. The float bearing Queen Riverie and her attendants was featured. Fire departments and bands from New Brunswick, Jamesburg, Woodbridge, Cerebral, Matawan, Freehold, Princeton, Cranberry, Keensburg, Milltown, Red Bank, Fords, and Roosevelt participated along with the local fire department. South River's firemen were the last company in line. They were distinctive in their white trousers and blue coats and were escorted by Price's band. The anniversary celebration ended with a baseball game and a second block dance. Albert Thomas Moore, an African-American photographer based in South River, took the official group portraits that were used in the publicity and program booklet. This image of the Willett descendants was published without the associated names. It was reprinted for South River's 250th anniversary in 1970, and the eight surviving members of the group were identified. George June is standing at the far left. Helen Deming is the young woman standing farthest to the right, and Samuel Willard Borum is behind her left shoulder. Nancy Service is seated at the far left, and Gladys Borum at the far right. The three boys seated on the floor are Warren K. Borum, Raymond D. Borum Jr., and Curtis Daniel Slover Borum. The woman seated just behind Curtis Borum is Ella J. Peterson, identified from the photograph of the organizing committee for the 200th anniversary.